Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to use XLOOKUP to search in reverse order. And this is the second video in a series on how to create this interactive report and dashboard. This is my submission from the Excel Hash competition. I explained all that in the previous video, so definitely watch that uh, part one if you want to learn more about this file and how it works. But in this video, we're going to look at the data sheet and specifically how to calculate the duration, the amount of time the employee is in the office. And we're going to use XLOOKUP for that and search in reverse order. So in this cell here, we have a formula and it's a big, long, ugly formula, uh, but don't let this scare you. I'm going to break it down and make it much easier to understand. Part of the reason it's long and ugly is again, because we're using those structured references and some running total references for our ranges. And uh, that just becomes kind of an ugly formula with Excel tables, unfortunately, but we'll look at how to use regular ranges here too. We're also using the new XLOOKUP function and its feature to look in reverse order. So I'm going to explain that very cool makes this task uh, much, much simpler. And really the task here is to do a lookup. So in this case here, let's jump down to this cell here that has a number in it. What we're doing here is doing a lookup for this name, uh, Jim Halpert in this case, and we're looking in the range above. So the range above that current row uh, for the same name, Jim Halpert, and then we're going to return the time, but we're looking in reverse order. So we're looking from bottom to top, going from, uh, yeah, bottom to top, uh, looking up to find the first occurrence of Jim Halpert. Then we're going to return the uh, timestamp and then just subtract that from the timestamp in the current row. And that'll give us the duration. So in this case here, Jim showed up at 830 and then he went back out of the building at 956, maybe for his uh, morning break or something like that. All right, so let's first look at the XLOOKUP function. So I'm going to put that here. I'm also going to go uh, to File Options and turn off the table formulas. So File Options, Formulas, uh, this checkbox here, Use tables, Table Names and Formulas, that'll turn off these structured references and just give us regular range references for now. Just a little easier to understand when we're explaining this one. So again, here we're going to type our XLOOKUP function. So equals XLOOKUP, we'll tab into that. Our lookup value, again, will be the employee name here in the current row, so cell A2. We'll type a comma there. Our lookup array is going to be the range above uh, that current row. So in this case, uh, we can select A1, uh, but then we're going to do a colon to A1, just like this. And we will also want to make this first reference an absolute reference for the row. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the row number there. And that again will just uh, give us a range that extends down, but keeps it above the current row because we don't want to look in the current row for that employee name because it's obviously going to be there. So we want to look above to find the first occurrence. So that'll be our uh, lookup array range. It'll make more sense as the formula is copied down too. And then for the return array, we want the uh, time. So we're going to select B1 there, type that colon to B1, and then again make that. Uh, our absolute reference just for the row there. Okay, so next for uh, XLOOKUP, the next argument is if not found. So this is kind of if there's an error or if it's not found, what do we want to return? In this case here, we could either return a blank or I'll just type not found. So we understand that that's not found. Comma, uh, match mode, we're going to default to the exact match because we want to find that employee's exact name. So we'll just type a zero there, comma, for search mode, we want to search last to first. So this will be a negative one, or we can down arrow tab into that. And that'll be a negative one to again, search last to first. So it's going to search up. The order is going to go up instead of down. Uh, so that's everything for X lookup. Close the parentheses there and hit enter. Of course, that'll copy the formula down. So we can see in these first few that it's not found because it hasn't found this name above uh, that row because it's the first occurrence of the name. But here for Jim Halpert, uh, we did find a value. So again, we're looking for, and I'll uh, hit F2 there so you can see it. We're looking for Jim Halpert in this range above and find it right here. And then since we're looking from last to first, we're again just going to return this date here. And that's what these are here. Uh, their dates formatted as numbers. Of course, we can select the entire column, uh, right click, uh, format cells or control one. Sorry, that's off your screen, but I'm choosing uh, format cells. Let me see if I can get it on your screen. There we go. Format cells or control one. For our number format, we want to choose a date, and then we'll show both the date and the time. 
hit OK. And so now we can see that we're returning that uh, date and time. And this again would be the, the time that Jim came into the building. So the previous entry or exit is previous uh, recording in or out of the building is what's being returned here. And then the next thing we're going to do is just subtract that uh, from the current time in the current row. Now we can do this all in the same formula, but I'll go ahead and do this in a separate formula here just so you can see how it works, or a separate column, I should say. So we'll say equals, and then again, we're going to take this time here, the current time in the current row, and uh, minus, subtract that from this time here that we found, which would be the previous time, hit enter, and that will, uh, again, give us these decimal values here. Now here, since it's not found, uh, it will just give us this value error, pound value error, but of course we can handle that. Uh, but right here we have the amount of time. Now this uh, decimal number is a fraction of the day, a fraction of a full day. So what I did, and I'll hit F2 here, is I just multiplied that by 24 for 24 hours in a day, and that'll give us the amount of hours, because it's just easy to calculate. What we're gonna do is sum up the duration column to give us a total and also do averages on it. Uh, so in that case, we just wanna use hours. It's an easy number to look at. So we'll just wrap uh, this uh, formula here in, uh, I'm sorry, in parentheses, and then multiply it by 24. That's all we're gonna do there. So we'll just modify the formula a bit. I also did that in the original formula hit enter, and now we can see we have 1.433, which is just the number of hours there and the fraction, 0.433 would be a fraction of an hour, it's so almost an hour and a half uh, that Jim was in the building before his first break. Now, if we go back to the original formula, we can see here that it starts with this if uh, function, and it's uh, determining or looking at if the current row equals out, then we're going to do that math, math to calculate the duration. If it's not, if the employee's coming into the building, then we're just gonna return a zero because if they're coming into the building, we can't calculate how much time they've been in the building because they're just coming into the building, if that makes sense. So of course up here, we get this pound value error and it's not found, uh, but as we go down, we would get, uh, start to get some numbers here and we don't want these numbers. So in this row here, uh, Meredith is coming into the building, so we don't actually wanna calculate anything here. We just wanna calculate it uh, when she goes out of the building. So that gives us, again, the duration she was in there. So we can add that if statement here. Uh, and again, we can combine this all in one formula, but I'll just add it here. So it's gonna say if, and then if this, uh, this here equals, again, the word out, uh, whatever, or whatever you're using there, uh, then if that's out, then we're gonna do that math. If not, let's put a comma there, so value if false, uh, for that we'll just return a zero, close the parentheses, and hit enter, and then we'll get zeros there, and only numbers when the employee leaves the building. If we scroll up to the top, we're gonna see that too. We'll just have zeros up here, so that handles that pound value error as well. Okay, so now let's look at this monster of a formula that uses the structured references to really create that same running total reference on the range uh, above. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna turn the uh, formula table formulas back on. So again, file options, formulas, uh, use table names and formulas, turn that on and hit okay. So if you do create this uh, formula, you'll have those on, it'll make it a little bit easier. Uh, if we jump back into this formula here, again, we just have that if statement starting out with it, whether it's in or out. And if it's uh, out, then we take the time in the current row and we're going to subtract that from the result of the X lookup function. So really the rest of the uh, formula here all the way down to here is this X lookup function. And then we multiply that by 24 uh, and that's, that's it. Uh, so for this X lookup, uh, what we have, oops, I'm sorry about that. What we have here is we have two running total references, one for the lookup array and one for the return array. So we'll first look at the one for the lookup array, and that's looking in the employee column. And here we have a reference to all of the cells in the employee column, including the header row. Now we're never going to actually look up a value in the header row. However, for the first row in the table, we need to still create that range to look above it. So therefore we're going to uh, use that, the entire column, I should say, and the header row, uh, the employee column. So that's what we have there, starting out there with the index function, just returning the first row there in the entire column. So that will be the header row. Could also create a reference directly to the header row there as well. That would work too. 
uh, and then we're going to have the colon there and then for the last cell in that range uh, we want the cell above the current row so in this case here we want to create a reference to this cell here a3 and again we're going to use the index function for that and we'll also uh, create a reference to the entire column and then what we're going to do with that is uh, use the row function to return the current row minus one. Uh, so that'll be the current row minus one. In this case, that would give us uh, this row here, which would be row three in the entire column. So this row, this row reference here would return row four, subtract one, and that would give us uh, the th row three right there for that entire column. So that's what that's doing there. That's that uh, fu the formula there to return the lookup array. And then the return array is really the exact same thing. We're just returning a value from the date time column. So you can really just copy and paste that entire reference, uh, paste it here, and then change this instead of employee, uh, the employee column is going to be the date time column. So that'll be our uh, return array. So that's how we use the XLOOKUP function with kind of that running total range, in this case, above the current row, so excluding the current row. So it's definitely uh, looks complex, and it is complex, uh, but once you, once you have it typed out there, it should be easy. And again, the, the advantage there, the reason we're doing that is because as we add new rows to the bottom of the table, uh, that will still include those new rows. If we use this type of reference here, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this reference here with this kind of running total, uh, when we add new rows to the bottom, this range might not extend properly. I kind of explained that in the last video too. It's just an unfortunate thing with tables. Um, it might be fixed in the latest version of Excel when you're watching this. However, in older versions of Excel, um, it, it might still be an error or bug. So we want to use those structured references uh, whenever possible. So yeah, that's it there. That's the XLOOKUP function. Again, uh, we're using the uh, exact match for the match mode and then negative one to do that search uh, in reverse order. So that's everything there, which allows us to then calculate the duration. And then of course, in the next video, we'll look at how to actually do some calculations and analysis on those durations uh, by employee and by department. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.